Okay, welcome to this video review of Windows 7. I'm currently running build 7077, which is the latest build, and as you can see in the bottom right here, I've still got my watermark. But as you'll notice, there's no build string. Uh, usually you would have had build 7077 or something like that, and then lots of others be on my system. So this review is going to be for people who might not be very familiar with Windows 7. I'm just going to take you a brief overview of the way it looks and things are different from Windows Vista. So first of all, as you'll notice, it does look completely different from Vista, but there's not too many big changes that it's not as big as the leap as it was from XP to Vista, say. So first of all, let's just take you into the wallpapers and you can see you've got a lot of cool ones. There's a lot of new ones out. Um, one of the new features is if I was to choose what desktop background I want here, I can select some of the default ones here and I can have them change every so often so as you can see here I can have them change from 10 seconds to 30 seconds minute three minutes all the way up to just have it change every day so that's pretty cool so I'll, I'll let that run in the background I'll just select a few backgrounds here and then that will change every 10 seconds so I just click save changes and I'll wait for this lovely green plant to disappear and there we go you can see it's changed there Again, it's, it's nothing new, um, especially from macOS users. Um, they're going to probably think a lot's been copied, but it's just something which is going to make your life, you know, a bit more fun, hopefully. Okay, so that's that. Um, big change down here, as you can see, is the quick launch, and the whole of the taskbar has been given an overhaul. It's a big square block. Some people don't really like it that much, but I quite like it because of the way you can organize your programs down here in the bottom. Um, as you can see I've got a few programs installed at the moment um, and if you want to move them around you just have to click on them and as you can see there you can select exactly where you want them and um, whenever you're opening a program so if you open up the new paint you can see how it's highlighted and also Camtasia is highlighted because that's how I'm recording this video so that's pretty cool now let me just show you a few of the ways Windows 7 lets you organize Windows so let me just open a couple of things here. We'll get Firefox going, get C Cleaner going. Um, we'll get Notepad going, Solitaire. Okay, so we've got a few things going. The screen's starting to get a little bit busy now. So Windows 7 lets us <coughs> lets us organize our screen <coughs> real estate quite well here. <coughs> so we have a few options. Um, you still have your arrow switch by pressing the Windows key and tab. So that still remains some people quite like that. I never really used that myself and you still have your alt tab but new now with alt tab is let me just show you you can see I'm getting a full screen preview for every window that I'm flicking through now that usually didn't get to do that so that's going to be very helpful I think for a lot of people especially if you're running lots of internet browsers and you want to get to a specific page and you want to keep all your windows open still I think that's pretty helpful so if I wanted to select Mozilla Firefox I let go there and then I have the page here uh, another cool thing if you wanted to work on two windows at the same time for example and this is going to be a stupid example so if I wanted to draw something in paint but I still wanted my my web browser open at the same time and I wanted to take equal real, real estate um, on the screen, I would have to usually in Vista, uh, you know, resize my windows like this. It'll take ages, just getting them all perfect. And now, what Windows 7 does is, if I just grab the bar here, hold down the click, grab it over to the side of my screen, let go, and then grab this over the side of the screen and let go. It takes up exactly half the screen each, so that's pretty cool. And I'll just demonstrate that again. Just grab the bar drag it over to the screen you'll see a little icon appear and then you let go and this you can also do this if you want to make the window full screen instead of having to click the maximize button which isn't much of a hassle you just have to grab it again drag it to the top of the screen let go and it will now be full screen so that's pretty helpful and finally if we grab any window that we like and we don't want anything else to come up we just want to play solitaire because we're an extreme geek we're just going to give it a shake 
you see, see how quick that was? I'll do it again. Let me just load up a couple of things. Let me just get these back up. Okay, so if I just want this uh, this uh, window up, give it a shake, and everything goes away. So that's pretty cool. And actually, there is one more thing that, as you might notice, um, there's no quick launch down here, which would usually have your show desktop button. I know that's a popular feature, especially if you're using a lot of windows and the screen's getting quite busy. And they've actually moved it down to the bottom right, to the right of your time and date now. And this this little icon here. And if I just drag my mouse over that and rest it on there, you can see now I have uh, three transparent windows. So it's showing me where my windows are, but I can still see my desktop background. And then if I go ahead and let and just move my screen away, move my mouse away from it, and they come back up. If I click on my show desktop, obviously, that's what's going to happen. Now you can see again, as I demonstrated, all my programs that are running are highlighted here. Um, if, for example, I've got more than one instance of that program running, okay, this is the library, so all my documents, pictures, movies. Let me just run this a few times. Now, as you can see down here, I hover over libraries, and now I have four instances running, and I get a full screen preview every time I mouse over each of the icons, and I can also close it by pressing the small x here. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's mainly on the appearance. Um, gadgets have changed. As you can see, there's no Windows sidebar anymore. Um, instead, they've been replaced by gadgets which you can just throw anywhere on the screen. So I'll just get a few for you. Again, similar to what Mac OS X users will be experiencing. So I can just throw them anywhere I want. Keep maximize, minimize, just have them wherever I want. And then obviously the next time I start Windows, it's going to remember where I put them. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can install the ones you you like on your Vista, or you don't have to have any at all, which is <laughs> how I like to have it sometimes. Okay, and if we have a look at um, the start menu, it looks pretty similar. Um, Vista users won't be too perplexed. It should be pretty easy to get used to. Um, there's a few new things. If we go into the control panel and take a look at network and internet, now you'll see this thing added here called the home group. Now this is Microsoft Windows 7's solution to networking different Windows 7's computers. Now what you do is you'd have to run home group on one of your computers in your home if you're all running Windows 7 and then each computer would have to enter in a little password. So if I just demonstrate this for example I'll say okay I want to Here we go. That would be that would be the uh, home group password which you'd need to type in in each computer, and which would automatically connect you up to the the network. And you can just select which you want to share over the network, whether it's music, pictures, documents. So I think that's made it pretty easy because um, networking can sometimes be quite difficult, even for advanced users. It can be quite annoying sometimes. Um, devices and printers is quite cool. Windows Seven, as you can see here, it's noticed some of my hardware. So it's notice my LG monitor here, my gaming mouse, and the 360 controller. Shows it in a nice big picture, seeing that everything's working correctly, the driver's been installed. So that's pretty cool right there. Um, gaming performance is pretty good. I haven't actually installed any games myself, but if you look at some reviews on the internet, um, people have obviously benchmarked XP Service Pack 3, Vista Service Pack 1, and Windows 7, various builds of Windows 7 and found it to be very very good very very fast with games. Um, on the system I would say it uses about 100 megabytes less of RAM when it starts up on my 4 gigabyte system which is pretty helpful. I mean I'm not really too bothered but I think people who are using systems which <coughs> aren't as powerful are going to be quite a fan of Windows 7 especially if they're running Windows Vista right now even on the home basic. Um, just looking at like installation, um, installed in about 25 minutes and what's really good is um, as soon as it started up I had everything running, Ev all my drivers were installed, there was nothing left to be done 
I didn't have anything in the bottom saying Windows is installing device drivers, everything was installed, I was ready to go, everything was snappy, it's quick. I think a, a main difference is that the windows just seem to open up quicker, just less of a lag. Sometimes in Vista there was a slight lag, but I think now things are just very quick, snappy, and everything's working pretty smooth. I think Microsoft might have got this one right, as a lot of people are enjoying. It's got some new sample music as well, which is quite fun. Anyway, that's just a quick overview of Windows 7. There we go, just shaking a window again. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Just uh, There should be more on the way if you subscribe and rate the video. And thanks for watching, guys.